So we're doing mitosis, we're doing the cell cycle. We're superimposing the stages of the cell cycle onto the board. All right. So the first stage of cell cycle is GL. All right, GL is the cell doing normal cell type stuff. That is here. These are the daughter cells. It's also the end of the process, but it also represents the cell going back to normal function. So these two cells, the daughter cells, came from this. These two cells now are completely formed, normal, and they're doing their normal function, whatever that happened to be in the body, if they're liver cells, bone cells, whatever. This represents GL. It also represents the two daughter cells. Stage eight, we call GO interface. So I put a label here, GO interface. Right. A cell that's in GO is signaled either neurologically or most likely chemically to enter cell division, to prepare for cell division. So it leaves GO and it's gonna go into G1. All right. We're using this to represent G1 interface. Why? Because in G1, we have duplication of the organelles. And if you look closely at this, we have the nucleus and they put in two organelles. They put in the centrioles. These two black dots represent the two centrioles that are found in a normal cell. What you see is they've been duplicated. You've got one, two, three, four. So what's happening here? duplication of organelles, which is our definition of G1. So I'm using this as G1 interface. We've duplicated the centrioles. Now, we don't have all the other organelles present, but they're being duplicated during that stage. Notice what else we have here. Number one is showing you the cell membrane, plasma membrane. Number two is whatever's inside, so you can say cytoplasm or cytosol. Number three is here on the outside of the nucleus, so we would say nucleus. Number four is pointing to the edge, the white edge surrounding the nucleus. So what would we say for four? We know the nucleus is a double membrane, but what do we have to say for four? nuclear envelope because we assume that this is the two membranes in one nuclear envelope inside you've got a nucleolus and you have your genetic material as loose spaghetti so loose spaghetti is called what chromatin chromatin out here we have our, in black, centrioles. What do we call the area around the centrioles? This yellow area, centrosome. And then you're beginning to see the production. See all these little spindles coming off of here? These, uh, these are called astral rays or asters. This is the beginning of the microtubules. Remember, microtubules are synthesized here by the centrioles to be used for cell division. You're beginning to see them being created. Right. We move to here. Now you really can see some of these microtubules. Now they have them in white. Okay, these are creating them and they're starting to migrate. Okay, they're starting to migrate the centrioles and stretch these microtubules, which are gonna become spindles across the cell. This becomes our first stage of mitosis prophase, right? I don't, like I said, I don't really have a place for, for G2, so I'm bypassing G2 and I'm going right into prophase. And during prophase, what do we see? We see the spindles being created, the migration of the centrioles, 
eventually the spindles are going to be strung across the cell. Okay, you see here it's quite early on. You see here they're almost across, and now you see the the spindles across. So if we're going to use the word prophase, this would have to be called early prophase, and this would have to be called late prophase. Starting almost complete. Another way to do it is we can call this prophase, and we can call this S, right? Because what happened from here to here. The chromatin was organized into chromosomes, and one of the things we need to do during cell division is organize the spaghetti into chromosomes and then duplicate the chromosomes, right? That's one of our stages, duplication of DNA. So we could look at this from the DNA perspective, that this cell is focused on, yes, it's doing this, but it's also focused on organizing and duplicating the genetic material so that it can then be divided. That's the way I prefer to do it. The way that the, the key and, and the book does it is they like to talk about an early prophase, a late prophase. I like to talk about GO interphase, G1 interphase, S interphase, then we skip G2, and we go to prophase, okay? So for our purposes, I show you both ways, but for our purposes, label here, GO, here, G1, here, S interphase, and then we go to prophase here. Centrioles, stringing the spindles, we call these spindles, these white lines, these red lines, across the cell. Nucleus is dissolving away. All of our chromosomes have been duplicated, ready to go. Metaphase. Metaphase is very unique in that everything lines up along the middle. The spindles are made, the centrioles are at opposite poles, and the genetic material and organelles, which are not present, are attaching themselves to the spindles that were made. Metaphase. Anaphase means we start to separate. And you see here, the spindles are pulling the chromosomes apart, starting to separate half the stuff to one side, half the stuff to the other. Here, we're continuing. We started, we continue. You can now see it's separate. Early anaphase, late anaphase. Now, why do we separate anaphase into early and late? Because look, see the shape? See the shape? During late anaphase, you also begin to see the pinching in of the membrane you begin to see the beginning of cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the pinching in to make the two cells. So during late anaphase, cytokinesis also begins. Following anaphase, telophase, more cytokinesis. Mitosis is complete, two daughter cells, back to GO interface. Notice that during telophase, the nucleus reforms, right? It was here, here, disappearing, gone, comes back. The chromosomes go back to chromatin. Done. Quick review. G1 interphase, S interphase, prophase, metaphase, early anaphase, late anaphase, telophase, formation of daughter cells, back to GO 